their Bibles to the world. Presents it as fact. Uh, it's easy for us because Christmas can be so nostalgic. Uh, you look back at your Christmases and you reflect. Some of you would have some pretty amazing stories to tell us of your childhood and your Christmas and what you remember. It's, uh, for a lack of a better word, it's a magical time for many. Uh, you think of that. It's nostalgic. It's memories. It's uh, wishes and hopes and dreams and lots of things, uh, but, I, but I, I need us to put on our, our, our glasses that bring us to reality of what Christmas is about. Though those things are good, I like the spirit of Christmas, I like, I like uh, moments of family, I think that's very important. Uh, family is a very important institution God's created. In fact, created before the church even. God took families and then placed them into the church. And uh, that's the beauty of things. But the first institute being the church. And that's where we teach our children about God. It's where we encourage and help one another about God is in the institute of the family. However, uh, Luke brings us to a reality that Christmas isn't like the story of Hansel and Gretel. It isn't like the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It's not like uh, uh, the Three Pigs and the Big Bad Wolf. It doesn't start out once upon a time. Uh, it's not something that is of a fairy tale nature. It's not something that is of an unrealistic belief. But, but uh, I love how uh, 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 Luke writes. He writes in chapter 2, he says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. He brings us to a reality check of some historical figures that here's Caesar Augustus. Now, most of you have probably heard of Julius Caesar. Any of you ever hear of Julius Caesar? Well, his kingdom come against him, and he was killed. And, and so the word got out to his, his nephew, uh, uh, who, who will become Caesar Augustus. His name is changed, but Caesar Augustus was in his late teenage years, and uh, his, he, he finds out that the kingdom has been left to him uh, from, from uh, uh, Caesar Augustus. And so the reality is, is here's some factual evidence that this really did happen about Jesus. So all nostalgia aside, all the fairy tales aside, the reality is that Christmas is Christ. Amen. And so I love that. I love that, that he eliminates all those things that, that take us from this magical make believe and brings us to the reality of Jesus Christ. And so let me read my text in verse number 45, chapter 1, verse number 45. The Bible says, And blessed is, is she who believed, for uh, there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. <coughs> Amen. Christmas is really a time of hope. It's a cause of hope. Amen. And so I, I want to bring that out in the next few moments. I see the time. I'm going to be respectful, but I want the presence of the Lord to be here. I want God to help us in the next few moments uh, as we think about Christmas and this cause of hope. Uh, in our culture, we can trivialize Christmas and uh, the influence of a, a culture can lose its powerful message. But, but uh, I want you to know that Christmas is hope this morning. Now you may say, Brother Seville, uh, I'm thinking about hope, and that's what's in my mind. Can I uh, give some augmentation to what hope is? Hope is not a wish. You get that, that, that book in the mail that comes from Walmart. Uh, you know, they handed them out in Walmart. Uh, they're right at the door. Our, our little 
girls got those little home books and uh, uh, they've been everything they see they want for Christmas. And we think that that's what Christmas is that we wish and we hope for. And in our culture, you know, uh, Santa Claus is a big thing. Uh, him in his red suit, uh, trimmed in white, and, and his jolly old belly. Ho, 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 ho. And uh, we think about that and, and children going to him and giving them their wish list. Uh, but that's really not what wish is about. Uh, when we look at the Word of God, it's not a, 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 a hope, hoping for wishes to come true. But when we look at what hope is really about in the Word of God, we find that hope is this, that hope is a confidence that God will do it. Amen. So we don't have to come to God this Christmas with our wish list, hoping for something, wishing that it would come to pass. But we can come to God with a hope of confidence of knowing that he that has begun the good work in us is going to finish it. And that our today and our tomorrow and every day don't have to be full of wishes, but they can be full of hope and confidence knowing that God is working for us. Do you know what took Mary to the place uh, and, uh, and at that first Christmas? The birthday of the king, as Brother, Brother Dennis say, it was the birthday of God. It was the birthday of Christ. Not that God never was, but, but Jesus coming into uh, humanity, becoming the second Adam. Uh, yeah, at that birth, Daniel it gave us a real hope. So let's talk about that hope quickly. There is a hope that is confident in the expectation that God will fulfill His promise. Christmas is a reminder that we can have hope in the expect expectation that God will fulfill His promise. Any of you ever read the Word of God and all of a sudden there is something that is planted there the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost makes it real to you that this promise is for you. And so you grab onto it and you say, God, I know that this promise is for me. And so it's not a wish, but it is a hope. It is a confidence that what God promised, He will bring to pass. We can trust Him that He will fulfill His promise. And so this is when Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, the, the, the Bible says that Gabriel has just left her, and immediately she travels to her cousin Elizabeth's house. And as she visits with Elizabeth, the Bible says that Mary rose in those days and went into, uh, into the hill uh, country with haste into the city of Judah. And she entered into the house of Zacharias and, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary that the babe leaped inside of Elizabeth and was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now there's several things that I want to look at here. But, but what, what God promises, He will deliver on His promise. God promised the Messiah. And there was the hope of every Jewish girl that she would give birth to the Messiah. And so God promised it. And though days and years and decades passed and centuries passed, we find that God kept His promise. Amen. Here is Mary and she walks into the house and she's so excited Gabriel has just visited with her. Doesn't mean she doesn't have promises or doesn't mean that she doesn't have doubts and problems. But one thing she's holding on to is the promise that God will fulfill that which He has promised. Amen. If God saved you, He's going to keep you. And if God has promised us an eternity with Him, we will have an eternity with Him. And if God has promised that He'll answer your prayer, He will answer your prayer. And if God has promised you joy unspeakable and full of glory, He's going to deliver on that. And if God has promised you, amen, that He would satisfy you all your days, He will deliver on that. If God's promised that His mercies are new every day, He will deliver on that. Amen. He says, whatsoever things we desire when we pray, amen, it's godly God to be a godly desire if we ask them. Amen. Uh, our Father which is in heaven, He'll hear us and answer us. God will provide. Amen. Amen. It's the good news that we can be confident in the expectation that the hope that He gave us, He will fulfill. And so here it is that Mary comes to Elizabeth. 
And the Bible says that when she salutes her, she greets her, she welcomes her, all of a sudden the news is given, they begin to talk, and all of a sudden the Bible says that the Holy Ghost touches the baby that is in Elizabeth's womb, and, and the baby jumps. Now, the baby wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost, as we know in Acts chapter number 2, and maybe even the baby didn't understand everything about the Holy Ghost. He was just human, but his response to the Holy Ghost was that he jumped. Amen. It is our responsibility that when the Holy Ghost moves in our life, amen, we may not understand everything about God. Amen. We may not understand everything about the person of God. But when the Holy Ghost moves on us, we need to respond. Amen. 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 There was John the Baptist still being formed in his mother's womb and the Holy Ghost moved on him and all of a sudden he jumps. When the Spirit of God begins to move as he did this morning, we may not understand everything, but to raise our hands, if we jump, if we cry, our soul is sensitive to the Spirit of God. God, whatever you have for me, because there's an expectation that you're going to fulfill that hope Thank which you have given us. You. I've got to move on quickly. <clears throat> but there's a hope to trust in God even in spite of problems. Do you think Mary and Joseph were problemless? I think they had problems just like you and I did. Listen, I know that there was a confidence in what God spoke, but here she is. She's not married and she's expecting a child. She knows her virtue and she knows her integrity. She knows her righteousness. But will everybody else, how will Joseph respond to it? Joseph is now going to say, what will community say? What will my family say? I know the truth. I know what God has spoke. Now my wife is great with child and I have to take her to census. I don't even know where there's a room. It comes to a room and there's no room and she's great with child. Do you not think they did not have problems? He's worried about building a home. And yes, you may say, well, they're young and they're naive. Yes, but they still have a realization that there are some problems there. The background of the problem, there are shepherds that no one cares about taking care of the sheep at night. Uh, there's the backdrop of the innkeeper who's trying to make room for everybody. There's lots of problems that's presented there. Amen. There are many problems, but the good news is this, that no matter how many problems there are, there is a deep-seated hope that God will meet our needs because hope is not a wish. Hope is a confidence that God is working and moving even in the background where there is problems. Yes. Your Christmas may not be perfect. Uh, you know that, that there can be a lot of things at Christmas. There is the fatigue. Many are probably experiencing that because there's so much to do. Amen. We're going, 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 going. There's the fatigue and the tiredness. Amen. Don't lose the hope of Christ in the middle of the fatigue. There may be that of uh, uh, the resentment. There's this schedule to do and that schedule to do and uh, this demand to me. Don't become a bah humbug. Amen. Let the deep-seated confidence of the hope of Christ radiate out because He will fulfill what He has promised. Amen. And we can trust in Him in spite of all our problems. There's that of grief and loss. And every year I want to touch on this because during the year there may be a goodbye to someone or something that, that will make our Christmas different. Amen. But even in the middle of that, understand that we can't lose the hope and the confidence. Amen. That God is still there. Even in the middle of problems, God is going to work. Yes. Understanding that there is, you know, those pressures and, and maybe there's even a loneliness and, and separation at Christmas. You know, it demands a family that lives away, can't be there the way that we want. But don't lose the hope, Amen. the confidence that God will work in spite of our problems. You see, here it was. As we read on down to this chapter, you'll find, uh, or as we, we flip over to chapter number two, later in the chapter you'll find after the birth of Christ that as the as the uh, as, as it was according to uh, 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 the 
the purification laws of Moses, uh, that behold, there was a man, the Bible says, in Jerusalem, whose name was Simeon. The same was a, 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 a man that was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. The Bible says that Mary and Joseph, they came and they brought Jesus in their arms. The Bible says, uh, then took he uh, him up in his arms and, and blessed God and said, O oh Lord, now let thy servant depart in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation. I need you to know that, uh, that in the middle of the hoping and in the waiting, we can't stop believing because God will perform. And all of a sudden, here it is, that, that hope begins to, to transcend of the understanding and the expectation of Joseph and Mary and Simeon. Everything's happening in the middle of problems and, and in the middle of life being busy. But when they meet God, God, the hope of Him, transcends every one of their situations. If we will this Christmas meet with God, the hope that He brings will transcend situations. I'm not talking about a wish list. I'm talking about confidence in God. See, hope waits for God to accomplish His will. Simeon didn't say, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to try to figure out my way and do my own thing. Simeon said, I'm waiting. The Holy Ghost spoke to me and I'm waiting for God to perform. You see, hope waits for a sovereign God to move. Don't try to fix it yourself. Don't try to figure it out yourself. Amen. I have confidence in a sovereign God. Amen. That He is able to do everything. He is the absolute master and ruler over everything in our lives. Understand that whatever happens in our life has come because God's agenda has allowed it to happen in our life and continue to hope in Him, knowing that God is going to continue to work out His agenda in our life. Amen. From our, our, our relationship with God uh, to our, our, our family structure and situation to our job situation to everything that's happening around us our health our finances amen god allows agendas to happen because god's going to continue to work on the agenda it was looking dark in jerusalem it was looking bad things were spiritually going bad but simeon his hope was in god god is allowing you to be sovereign listen sometimes we leave Jesus as a baby in the manger, and we think we gotta control the situation, Brother Josh. We gotta we gotta call God. We gotta take care of God. We gotta make sure God's on earth. No. God is not a baby. And God doesn't want to work by your plans or my plans. But God is sovereign. And this Christmas, God is working on his own agenda and his own plans. And he has your best interest in mind. Even if there's difficulty, yes, he has your best interest in mind. There's a part of the puzzle that you can't, you can't miss. Any of you ever tried to put a puzzle before, together before and you get down to the end and you're missing a piece? How frustrating. One piece and it's missing, Terry. Sometimes we as believers live our life the one piece that's missing is hope and confidence in God. Would you know that Christmas, the whole surrounding of that first Christmas is about hope in God. And allowing God to be sovereign in every situation because hope does not disappoint. Do you know it takes as much energy to buy into hope as it takes to buy into despair. For the same price. Whatever you put your energies into, amen, it's the same price. So why don't you say goodbye to despair and buy in on hope? Because God gives, as Peter relates to us, I lie with hope. It's not dead, but it's alive. And so here it is, Elizabeth and Mary shows us that hope does not lead to disappointment. They come together 
And as we see uh, the, the message of the Word of God, the Bible says that there they were. And, and the Bible says, and blessed is, is, is she who believed. For there, there shall be a performance of those things which was told her from the Lord. Amen. Mary, I want you to put your hope and your confidence in God. Would you believe? Not wish, but believe in God, knowing that there is going to be a performance of the things that God has told you. Everything that God speaks in His Word, everything that God has spoke to you, in a place of prayer. Amen. As long as it lines up to His Word. I want to tell you something this morning. Blessed or happy will be you who puts your confidence and your hope in God. Because God will never disappoint. When we put hope in Him, you will never be disappointed. If Sister Holly would come this morning if you stand. I see the time. Can I ask you to allow the Holy Ghost to work for just a few moments? There may have been times in your life where you got up on Christmas morning and you thought you knew what maybe your parents were going to get you or someone was going to get you. And it wasn't there. Wow. Your wish list. You were disappointed. It's not good enough just to wish in carnal things. But God wants us to hope in eternally secure things. So this morning, can I draw our attention and our minds away from the wish list of Christmas? And can I tell you that as was said to Mary, if you will believe in what God said, Amen. Amen. Everybody here is different this morning. Where are the things that you're at in life? Christmas doesn't mean everything's perfect. It wasn't the first Christmas. But Christmas means this that God delivers a promise. And the hope of his promise fulfills. Even when life isn't going to work. So would you close your eyes all around the sanctuary? No one looking around. But would you look deep inside of yourself and would you say, God, this is where I'm at today. And God, I want you to be sovereign. But would you have your way in the agenda of my life?